<laughs> All right. Tone's going to teach it after this. I mean, record, it, record it when he does. Yeah. Um, so, so, the, so basically, yeah. So this is our general form of the transfer function. We've talked about that. S, when I have this term right here, the S to the plus minus N, that means I have N uh, poles or zeros at the origin. Okay. And then the terms on top, what are the S values that make the numerator equal to zero? zeros and the s values that make the denominator zero or poles right those that's our basic idea now what we did we went through this whole thing is we take 20 log of that whole thing all right well, well we take actually specifically we take 20 log of the magnitude of that whole thing all right when i take why do we take the log in order to represent data more accurately yeah to sort of be able to zoom on the axes better right so essentially what we found is if i have a typical pole right the log magnitude stays flat up until the pole and then starts to drop. And the rate it drops is what? Yeah, somebody online, what's the rate of drop once I hit the pole frequency? So negative 20 decibels per decade. Yeah, it falls 20 decibels per decade. Once I hit a zero, it rises 20 decibels per decade. If, if I have a pole or a zero at zero, where is zero on our log scale? Negative infinity, right? Negative infinity. So it's, that where is, that's way off the charts, right? So basically, if that's the case, this guy's always been rising. And usually we're focused on kind of frequencies around, you know, one radian per second and maybe a, a million radians per second, usually kind of in that range, okay? So usually by the time we see that guy, he's just rising up if he's a zero and he's falling down if he's a pole, okay? All right, so, and then if I have a constant, we said a constant, I get 20 log of the magnitude of that constant. So what's that do? It just shifts it up or down, okay? So um, in Zybook, they have, a, they have a picture that kind of summarizes that nicely, right? In terms of, all right, if I have a zero at the origin, if I have a pole at the origin, if I have a single zero, single pole. But one thing that they, that they talk about here, which I, I have not talked about, is what happens if I have a quadratic zero or a quadratic pole, okay? In other words, if I had an S squared term, okay? I, I, don't, I, I probably won't talk about these too much. In this case, what, what happens is, is you get a situation where I have two poles basically sitting at the same point or two zeros sitting at the same point. And so it falls at 40 dB or rises at 40 dB per decade. Now, part of the reason why I'm, I'm not talking about those so much is that's kind of sort of what it does. This, it, it, as it turns out, what, what actually kind of ends up happening is it, it not, not only does it start to fall there, but it actually rises up right near this frequency right here, right near this cutoff frequency. It rises up and then it falls down. And that all depends on what the values are. How much it rises up depends on what the values are. I don't want to talk about that. Right. When it comes down to it, you, you should have the intuition of what's going to happen in a Bode plot. If I really want to know what's going to happen in a Bode plot, I do not make it by hand. Right? I, if I really, really need to know what's going on, I go into MATLAB because MATLAB can do it pretty easily. Okay. All right. So we talked about this process. It's five steps. Get the poles and zeros. Get the breakpoints that go with those. Get the correct form. Look at each individual pole and zero add them up, and then shift everything up or down. That's the basic process. The problems on the homework are set up to follow that process. You follow those things, you go through it. Now, <clears throat> Eli, you look ready. I have a question that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. So okay. you keep going. All right, all right. All right, so, so the, all right, Mat, the MATLAB commands, let's talk about the MATLAB commands, right? So I talked about, I, I said, our approximation, if I have a single pole, our approximation is that it's flat until I get to the pole and it falls 20 dB per decade. The blue here is the actual value. In other words, if I plotted the actual magnitude on a logarithmic scale, this is what it would look like. There is a little bit of a difference here, right? We actually just saw that, right? We just looked at that thing there at the beginning where I, where I ran that simulation and I said, well, how do we measure the cutoff frequency? When I set the function generator to the cutoff frequency, it certainly isn't the case that at the cutoff frequency, it's the output's as big as the input, 
right? It was 0 0.707 times the input. That's because there's a little bit of a difference here between the actual and the real, all right? The difference at that specific point, at that breakpoint, is negative three decibels, all right? And if you do the math on that, negative three decibels, negative three dB equals 20 log 10 of the magnitude at that frequency. So if I had to solve that, what would it be? How would I figure out the actual magnitude? Divide by 20 and raise both sides to the power of 10, yeah. So you'd see that this value here would be about 0 0.707 if you did that. All right. So that's, sometimes we call that the 3 dB frequency, whatever. Okay. So let's say I wanted to make the exact plot in MATLAB, right? So how would I do that? So if I've got this, this thing right here, V in and V out, this is a high pass filter. You guys, if you're doing this in the lab, you probably have seen this, right? How, do, how would I solve for, for V out here? Voltage divider. Voltage divider. So I have R over R plus one over SC times V in, like that, which is gonna work out to be SCR over SCR plus one, okay? Times V in, okay? So that transfer function H of S here has how many poles and how many zeros? How many poles and zeros does that guy have? Has one zero and one pole, right? Where's the zero? Zero at the origin, okay? And then he's got a pole at one over RC. Doesn't have a zero at one over RC. Sometimes people look at that and they say, well, he's got a zero at one over RC, no. It doesn't, it's a zero at the origin. Zeros are the values that make the thing equal to zero, right? What makes this thing equal to zero is S equal to zero, right? That multiplier in front of the S is, means nothing per se, all right? So like if I looked at this guy, in, in terms of my standard form, I would say K is RC, right? And I would say my tau P is also RC. All right, and that this guy has a form K over S tau P plus one, like that. That's how I would look at that in terms of my standard form. All right, so let's say. Aren't you missing an S up here? Uh, I am. All right, yeah, there'd be an S right there too. Okay. All right, so how do I put this thing into, into MATLAB, right? So I, I chose in this case RC equal to 0 0.001, okay? All right, so if you look at the way this is written out, so if I plug, plug those numbers in, this guy becomes that, all right? MATLAB has a command called Bodhi, all right? You can call Bodhi two ways, but the way I think it's more commonly done nowadays is using this TF command here, all right? So what I have here is, is num den. So I create a vector that has the coefficients in the numerator and the coefficients in the denominator. So if you look at my transfer function here, right? My transfer function is my numerator 0.001s. So if I think about trying to map that into a transfer function, the way I write that is like this, right? The S term, the first order term, has a magnitude or a coefficient of 0 0.001, and the zero order term has a coefficient of zero. Okay, and on the bottom, my denominator is 0 0.001 and then one, because in that case, what you're doing is you're you're mapping each of these terms, the coefficients to to basically entries in that vector. Okay, if if I had a second order equation where I had an S squared, there'd be three entries. The thing to remember is the first entry is always the highest order S term that you have. Okay. What do we do when we have uh, two like, separate things on the bottom? Like an, an S tau P plus one. So if you had S tau P one and you had S tau P two plus one. Um, well, you could, you could do a couple of things. One, one is to multiply them out by hand, 
right? You just FOIL those out, they're polynomial, so it's not too bad. It'll become an S squared. I wanna leave, I wanna leave it at that. There's a command that'll do it. There's a command that'll do everything. You would command to find out what you're gonna die tomorrow by getting hit by a bus. There's probably a command <laughs> in MATLAB that'll tell you that, well, you know, with probability of 50%, maybe, right? There's a command to do everything in MATLAB. So I, I don't want to say anything beyond that. Let me put it that way. Yeah, I it just, you'll never get anything too complicated where you can't multiply it. Yeah. Yeah. So if I pull that out, I need another zero in the numerator. No. No, if I, so if, let's say I had, let's say I had one over, um, if I had that, I could have that filter. Right, so my numerator in this case would be num equals one. And my denominator would be, I don't know if I foiled this out, it would be tau p one, tau p two. Yeah. Right, and then tau p one plus tau p two, right? It's gonna be like that. What's the what? TF, TF means create transfer function. So you're passing a numerator denominator argument to the transfer function. And then the command Bodhi makes the Bodhi plot. And what you'll get is that when you do it. All right, if you think intuitively what should happen in this case, if I, if I told you RC was 0 0.001, that was the location of our pole, right? We had a zero at the origin, right? This guy had a zero at the origin and a pole at one over RC. So he was rising, then he hits a pole, he levels off. That's exactly what that picture shows. And he levels off at 10 to the third, where the pole is at. Okay. Now you probably can't see that in your head as quickly as I do. Okay. But we're going to do more examples now. Now the Bode plot is going to give you two outputs. All right. One of them is the magnitude in dB. The other is the phase. Okay. Thing I haven't been talking about is how the phase changes. One of the things I've found in the past is when I talk about the phase that that usually drives students crazy to talk about phase. Um, and so I, I don't talk about phase. Um, it's too many things to keep in your head. Yeah. No, so in this case, well, so I, I don't, I'm taking advantage that I know what the answer is here and you don't yet. You're not comfortable enough yet to do it that fast. So if you sit and look at that one carefully, then you'll see it, right? But that's not something that we can probably talk about here, right? I, don't, I, I, wanna, I wanna look at my other examples, right? Um, so the other day we did this guy, right? With an op amp where I had D plus and V minus, and we did nodal analysis at that node right there. Okay. And I, I got, I did nodal analysis to do this. All right. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out that I did wrong actually the other day is I tried, I, so when I do, if I do my nodal analysis with everything coming out, if you compare this to what I did the other day, this, I had that as a minus sign the other day, it should be a plus sign, right? Out and out for those two currents, right? This current here is this current here, and this current here is the current going into this branch, all right? So if I do that math, I end up with this thing right here. I end up with this transfer function, all right? And we went through this the other day, all right, where we basically had this expression, all right? So this guy has a pole and no zeros, okay? So if I, when I went through this, we did, we did this sort of step-by-step step where I said I did the pole and then I had to shift it to account for the gain factor. Where would the cutoff frequency of this thing be? If I had to say, where's the cutoff frequency? 10. 10. Right, now my approximation, that cutoff frequency right there says that this guy would be at 40 dB, all right? But in reality, it would be at 37 dB at the cutoff frequency. It's always 3 dB below or 0 0.707 below, okay? We're not gonna worry about that here. We're just gonna say, well, it's flat and then it falls, okay? So <clears throat> let's start, 
fresh with. So does that mean that we, we can say like for answers that we for, for frequency is 40 or that it's 37? No, the cutoff frequency is 10. The value at the cutoff frequency is what we're talking about. The value at the cutoff frequency is, is the thing that's being approximated. Right. The cutoff frequency is still where that guy starts to fall. That's that's not approximate. Right. And so it it is should be clear in the homework. I tell you to use the approximate value. So if you just do it in MATLAB, you're gonna get the wrong answer because MATLAB will give you the right value for what the magnitude is of the cutoff frequency. I explicitly tell you to use the approximation. And they're different by a little bit, right? Um, so make sure that you use the approximation. Like in this case, if I said, what is the value at 10 radians per second? The value at 10 radians per second for what I have here is 40 dB. So use 40 dB. So can I just add three to the MATLAB value? You could. Okay. I'm just... Not necessarily. All depends. There's there, there could be situations where. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, smart ass. There could be there could be differences. Yeah. All right. So if I if I look at if I look at this at this circuit here, okay. All right, where I've got now a totally different arrangement. So I got my values here. How do I start the analysis in this case? I want to get my transfer function from V in to V out. How would I do that? Yeah, start, start with the golden rules, right? So so what do I know with my golden rules? What are they? I plus and I minus are zero. So here's I plus, here's I minus, right? I plus equals I minus equals zero, okay? So no current goes in those two places. The other one is that V plus equals V minus, right? And V plus is grounded, and so in this case, it's zero. Now, if you look back to problem six from the homework that we talked about at the beginning, that's a different story, right? You can look back at this one, right, and figure it out. But V plus and V minus are equal, but they're not zero, all right? The change I made to that circuit makes this simpler for sure, all right? But it still doesn't become trivial, shall we say. All right. All right. Back to the circuit at hand. So what would I what would I do here? Once I know this stuff, how would I how would I approach this? Nodal. Nodal. Yeah. Do nodal. And where what node would I do nodal at? B minus. Yeah. B minus. Right. And so I know the way you guys like to do this. There's a current going this way, current going that way, and a current going this way. Right. So the current going into the op amp though we know is what. Zero. So basically I have in this case zero. So the current going this direction, we'll do that first. Zero minus V in over what? Over one plus V. R1 plus one over SC. And I have C1 and C2 equal to each other. So I'm just going to say one over SC. Okay. All right. Plus what? What's the other current? Zero minus V out. Over, zero minus. over yeah, the parallel combination. combination. Yeah, so that's R2 in parallel with one over SC. And that's equal to zero. Okay. Now, um, if I don't go, get more flexibility here. All right. So let me. Move these guys over here and move this up. Oh boy. All right. Now, <clears throat> I, I know without going through the details of this, R2 in parallel with one over SC becomes R2 over SC R2 plus one. All right. You can derive that by plugging everything in. It's not too tricky. Right. What about R1 in series with 1 over SC? So that guy, what would that become? SRC plus 1. That would become SRC plus 1 over SC. How did I do that? You found, found a common denominator, right? 
So the common denominator here is SC, right? So I multiplied the R by SC over SC. And so it's all about basic algebra stuff when you're doing this, right? Finding common denominators and all that kind of stuff. So this guy becomes, if I simplify this whole thing, V out um, over V in is equal to negative R2 over SCR2 plus one divided by SCR1 plus one divided by SC. It, yeah, it I, I know the I know the answer, so it makes it easy. But yeah, so when I when I look at that whole thing, right? So I can. So what, how would I simplify that? If I have that expression, how do I simplify? It? So if I if I have if I have you know when yeah when you have a over b divided by c over d, that's the same as a d over b c, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy becomes, if I take this expression here and move it over, it becomes H of S negative S C R2 over S C R1 plus one times S C R2 plus one, All right? That is the result of shifting that around, okay? So you can you can look at that later if you're not if you don't follow the algebra. Keep change flip, also works like that too. What's that? Uh, keep change flip. If you keep the first one, um, you keep the first fraction, and then you change the uh, the division to a multiply, and you flip the other fraction. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what that's what we said here. Yeah. That must. I think there was a. I think there was a. I think it was a. I think it was a. Turn, it was an expression you used for. What did you call it? Keep, keep turn flip or something. Uh, keep change flip. <laughs> keep change flip. Okay. Yep. All right. It works. It works. Yeah. Back in the late '80s, early '90s, we did learn fun stuff. I guess. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So I got that expression right there. So, I, how, where are my poles and zeros? with that where's my two poles one zero two poles and one zero all right so just to be clear where's my zero at zero, at zero. yeah where's my pole it's negative one over cr1 and negative one over cr2 yep all right those are my poles and zeros all right so uh i'd have to start plugging in some numbers here so one of them is easy right zero is there uh, what did I say? I got R1 is a is 1K, R2 is 100K, and my Cs are 1 microfarad. So 1 over R1C, R1 was the 1K, so 1 over 10 to the third times 10 to the minus 6 is 10 to the third. Okay. The other one, 1 over R2C, is 10 to the 5th times 10 to the minus 6th, which is 10. All right, so that puts a pole here. And then, you know, technically, on a, I mean, this becomes hard. Here's, here's something. Here's 0, 10, and... Negative x? Yep, because remember, these poles oh, negative. are negative, yep. right? So... Here's negative 1,000. This is really not to scale. Negative 1,000, negative 10, and zero. Okay. All right. So those are my poles. Those map to breakpoints. That's the, sort of the step one, the second step, this 1A that I gave it. Okay. So I have poles at negative 1,000, negative 10, and zero. So where are my breakpoints? Well, technically, there's a breakpoint at zero, which we'll never see. All right, where are my other two breakpoints? 10 and 10 to the third, yeah. Okay. So 
is that guy, he just so happens to be, I think, in my standard form, right? That's my next check. Is, is he in my standard form? Um, so here's the transfer function. Let me copy it over to that next slide. Um, that looks like it's in my standard form, right? What's, what's the K value here? Negative R2C, right? Negative R2C. And tau P1 and tau P2 depend on those values, right? So there's a tau P1 and a tau P2, okay? So <clears throat> what I wanna do is now start graphing this whole thing, okay? So let's, let's do that the way we've done in the past. Now, before I get going, first thing I gotta do is I wanna dimension up my axes here. All right, so this intersection right here, where did I say I like to put that intersection? What intersection? Well, the intersection between the omega and the 20 log hj omega. So what frequency is this here? So basically the origin, zero, uh, no, zero is normally where you put that, right? You're used to axes and the origin is where they cross. What? Put it on one. 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 Yeah, great. That's one. Why? Because what's the log of one? Zero. Zero. So this guy over here, one decade before that would be 10 to the minus one, right? This guy would be 10. What's the next major line there? 10 squared, then 1,000, then 10,000, like that. Okay. And sorry, 10,000 is 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth, 10 to the sixth. All right. Now, what about the y-axis? How do I label that? It would go by 20. Yep. So 0, 20, 40, 60, negative 20, negative 40, negative 60, negative 80. I'm not sure how low I need to go here. All right. <clears throat> then what do I do? Well, I'm going to go back to this graph, right? So I got to do each one individually. So let's start with the 0. Okay, so where does the zero, the zero is at zero. So how do I deal with plotting that? It'll just be a, a line going uh, up with a slope of 20 mm -hmm. decibels per decade. At, it starts at one. Yeah, so it's it's gonna, well, it starts all the way at negative infinity and it just starts rising up. Yeah. And it's so gonna just go through the origin. Yeah, it's gonna cross through the origin like that, okay? And the slope of that guy is 20 dB per decade. So this here is the zero. Is our zero an S value thing? Yeah, so a zero, a zero, the zero at the origin it came from S equal to zero. Okay. Right. Well, negative zero, so that's why it starts at um, Yeah. Yeah, negative. negative. Yeah, and it's just going to keep rising up. Now, Let's do the poles next. So where am I? The poles gave me breakpoints at 10 and 10 to the third. All right, so let's do the pole at 10 radians per second. So before the pole, what do I get for frequencies lower than the pole? Somebody online. You just have uh, it going from zero to 10? Yeah, zero to 10. And then it drops uh, 20 dB? So it would... Yeah, it would drop by at 20 dB per decade. So what am I doing here? This thinks this guy is yellow. This is orange. Let's go with pink. All right, so this guy is going to be flat until I get to 10. And then he's going to start to fall at 20 dB per decade like that. How do we know he starts flat? Because we derived it. It's magic. Like, I guess my question is, how do, how do I know like if it's going... It starts, it starts, so if I have a pole, it starts at zero and then starts to fall. If I have a zero, it's flat, starts to rise. So if you want to see that, you have to go back to the, to the derivation and really see where that, that came from. But basically, we made the approximation what happens at low frequencies, what happens at high frequencies. Low frequencies are anything below, high frequencies are anything above. Okay. So that's that. Now, what else do I have? I, have, I got another pole, don't I? Where was my other pole? My other pole. Yeah. <laughs> 1,000, right? Okay, so what do I do for that? Well, I'm gonna change my colors again. What am I gonna do now? How about I do this? Start green, 
You're great. Zero to one thousand, then drop. Yeah. So, and to be clear, he's zero all. The, so he's zero starting at you know wherever negative infinity is where he starts and just keeps going until I get to ten to the third. And then at ten to the third, he's going to start dropping like that. Okay. That guy falls at twenty dB per decade. Now, what do I have to do with all of those things together? Sounds I got to add them up, right? And I say moving left to right. So where I'm going to start is all the way at the left, okay? So what should the summation of them be? I'm going to do, uh, hmm, what color should I do? I'll do purple. All right. Where do I, so where do I start? The summation of these guys, I have zero plus zero plus negative 20, right? So I start at negative 20. And what do I do? I follow this orange line, right? Or yellow line, whatever it is. Follow that to there. All right. Now, what do I do? You have a straight uh, line at zero. Well, so at that, so he, he basically is going to keep going up. Yeah, it would go up and then till 10, and then it would start to yep. go straight because. Once I, once, yep, that, you're totally right, Tony. So once I hit a pole, Right, the pole, so I have a zero telling me to go up 20 dB per decade. I got a zero telling me to go down 20 dB per decade. The result is I'm gonna stay flat at zero dB per decade. All right, and I'm gonna do that until I get to where? 10 to the third. Would that just make it a drop then since you have two going yep. down? Now I got two poles, one zero, and we're gonna, we're gonna drop at 20 dB per decade at that point. And so, easiest way to do it. It drops because I have more poles than zeros. Yeah, I'm adding them all up, okay. right? So when I have when I have one zero, I'm rising. At the point where I reach one pole, and the one zero. so I got one zero, one pole flat. Then I got another pole falling more. Okay. By another yeah, the, pole, the zero, fall. the negative twenty and positive drop, and then you got the other zero. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically that like that combined effect of all of them. Right. So I think in the, in the homework, what I ask you is like at certain frequencies, tell me what the slope is. So if you've got the whole graph, then you'll be able to tell me like at one radian per second, the slope of this thing is 20 dB per decade. At, uh, at 10,000 radians per second, this guy's slope is negative 20 dB per decade. If I had another pole farther out in frequency, it would drop even farther. So it would drop at 40 dB per decade. Right. So that would be an this is sort of bandpass, yeah, where he's got he's got a low frequency cutoff. So low frequency cutoff would be at about ten. High frequency cutoff would be at about a thousand. This would be a bandpass type of filter, right? Bandpass filters are usually much tighter, though. In other words, the low low and high frequency cutoff are usually much closer together. Um, but th but this is a bandpass, right? So that's I got one last step, right? My step five. I guess, you know, is shift everything up or down based on the K value. Okay, shift everything up or down based on the K value. So what was the K value? R2 times C. Negative R2 Negative. times C. Now in particular, we shift it up or down based on 20 log 10 of the magnitude of that. All right. So I got to specifically figure out what that is. Um, so it would be negative 20, correct? Yeah, so R2C, what is that uh, based on the numbers we have? Yeah, R2, well, no, R, yeah, R2 is 100K, so, and C is one microfarad. So that's one tenth is what that is. So that becomes 20 log 10 of. 10 to the minus one, yeah, one tenth, right? So what, what's that become? Negative 20 dB, okay? Negative 20 dB. So I shift the whole thing negative 20 dB. So go to my picture there. What would a, what would a shift of negative 20 dB look like? Put that Bring it down. Zero to zero. Bring the whole graph down. All right, bring the whole graph down. So not just shifting the middle part down. So, so basically it's going to take every point and shift it down. 
So, and lots of colors, but I don't feel like I. Why don't you use the spiral colors? I don't think that would come out too well. <laughs> Makes me think of my eight year old daughter, too. She seems like she would love that. Uh, right. yeah, but it does. <laughs> But it does. All right, so so where would I start? Not at on the left side here. I wouldn't start at negative twenty, would I? I start at negative forty here, right? So I'd go from negative forty up to here. Then I'd be flat, and then I would go follow the green line there. All right. So too many colors on top of each other. All right. So let me. Do it this way, I'll do it thicker. All right, so this, this guy here is our combined 20 log 10 of the magnitude of H of J omega. So is this considered a high pass filter? This would be a band pass. That was a comment that I think Tyler made here in the room, right? It's a band pass, right? Because what's happening is that at really low frequencies, I'm not passing anything, right? The magnitude is tending towards zero as I move towards zero. And the magnitude is getting to be smaller as I move towards high frequencies. So it'd be passing stuff in the middle. Okay. Okay. You guys follow that? Okay. All right. Um, now, one, one way to check to see if it's low pass or high pass when I look at these things is, is what I, what I kind of do is, is I can say, you know, take the limit as S goes to infinity. So if S starts to get to be a big number, right, I know what's going to happen, right? In this case, the way that I look at this is if I have more poles than zeros, it's, it's always going to be falling as I get the high frequencies, right? So... Um, I, I, this, this guy's low, low pass. You, in any real system, there's always more poles than zeros. Right? That doesn't mean the systems that you get will have that, but in any real system, there's always more poles than zeros. All right? If I had more zeros than poles, that means at infinity, I get a gain of infinity. Okay. Basically, if you ever really had that system, if you sneeze, the circuit would explode. Right? It, it, it's, it's just got a lot of way too much sensitivity if it has a gain of infinity at any frequency. All right. But we don't. I don't want to get too lost in that. All right. One more circuit. All right. Again, with op amp circuit. Why? Op amps are going to be on the next test too, right? Okay. So we got to remember how to do those. All of our op amp circuits are tending to have the same kind of shape here, aren't they? I keep trying to do them the same way. Now, you may want to check yourself later. Let's say I called this impedance here Z1. Let me go back to my black. All right, if I called this Z1 and I called this impedance up here, all of this crap, R2 and R3 and see, let's say I called that Z2. What I would find is that V out over VN, if you do nodal analysis that way, is gonna be negative Z2 over Z1. And you said I had algebra trick earlier, I didn't. I just knew that the result's always Z2 over Z1. So I didn't even bother doing algebra. I just went straight to that answer, right? So the, that does make this a lot simpler, right? That's the result of, of doing the analysis here. So in this case though, if I, if I go through and I, and I do that, well, this, this, this Z1 is pretty straightforward. Z1 is R1, right? What about Z2 there? So what about this impedance here? Z2, what would that be? Yep, R2 in parallel with one over SC plus R3, that whole combination, okay? And, and you could do the whole, you know, if you're not sure how to, to, to do that one, what did I do? Oh, I jumped ahead, there we go. Um, not sure how to do that. That basically would be one over one over R2, right? Plus one over R3 plus one over SC 
like that. All right, and you got to figure out how to simplify that guy down. Now, when I have two things in parallel, though, it, it always turns out that two things in parallel simply becomes a Z2 here would be, so it's R2 in parallel with 1 over SC plus R3. That always becomes, I multiply the two of them and I divide by the sum. So R1 plus R2 plus one over SC, right? Now, when you are faced with that thing, a lot of the problems I think people run into here is not that this is hard, but that the algebra is not. Hey, isn't it supposed to be R3 instead of R1? Yes, it is, yeah. All right. Problem people run into is the algebra is ugly. Okay. So how do I simplify this thing? Multiply times SC on top and bottom. Multiply top and bottom by SC, right? So if I multiply top and bottom by SC, I'm going to get SC, all right, the way I'm going to write this, SC. Yeah, SC. R3, R2 plus one plus R2 over, what am I gonna get on the bottom? SC times the sum R3 plus R2 plus one. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this is to be clear the impedance of that combination of R2, C, and R3, okay? And again, if I do the math on the whole thing, it's negative Z2 over Z1, all right? So what this guy becomes is negative S, C, R2, R3 plus R2, all over R1 times S C R2 plus R3 plus one. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> now why would you want to take the R1? Well it's I didn't take it out. It's because it's Z2 over Z1, what we found here, this was the Z2. So I just took the Z2 and multiply it by one over R1, right? So I have some ways of trying to check those things in my own mind, which I can talk about, which is to say, if, if the capacitor was, if I talk about high frequencies and low frequencies, right? At a low frequency, what's a capacitor look like? At DC, which is the lowest I can get, what's a capacitor look like? It's an open, one over, J omega C one over SC is infinite. It's an open. So that turn, what's that do to this branch with the R3 and the C? Gets rid of it, gets rid of it, right? So if that's the case, this guy will simplify down to negative R2 over R1, right? Which is what exactly would happen if I didn't have that branch, right? At a high frequency, what, what's the capacitor do? Shorts. Short then this thing should basically become the parallel combination of R2 and R3 divided by R1, all right? So you, if you do some checks on these formulas, you can see that they, they match up with, with your expectations, right? Um, right. For Z2, um, shouldn't it be minus R2 because it's um, negative? Yeah, I guess it's your, well, yeah, that there should be a, a minus in front of that whole thing there. Okay, I was just making sure. Yeah. Minus sign in front of the whole thing. All right. It'd be a lot of those mistakes. All right. So this guy's got poles, zeros. He's got the whole shebang, right? So where's what do we got for this guy? We got a pole and a zero. All right. So um, first of all, I'm going to jump ahead. Is that in my standard form? This thing right here, this, this guy here, this is my H of S. Is that in my standard form? Nope. It's not, all right, it's not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to put it in my standard form, all right? And I wanna plug in numbers because the numbers 
they're going to be better than trying to log all this stuff around, right? Are you going to plot this on a map? No, I wasn't, but I can if you really want me to. Um, well, I, yeah, I can if you want me to, you know, but, but I wasn't planning on it. So, so this guy was um, H of S is negative R2 over R1 times S tau Z plus one over S tau P plus one. All right, and the tau P and the tau S I can get from, from my previous stuff. The tau P was C times R2 plus R3. And the tau Z was, uh, was what? Yeah, C, it works out, so if I, so it'll be C times R3, right? This is the whole transfer function. I pulled out the R2. So this guy will be C times R3. Okay. You don't put that plus one? You that here? No, because there's a, that factored out of both, right? So look at how this guy relates to, so look at how this relates to this, right? And you'll see it's, you pulled out an R2 from both terms, mm -hmm. right? So you get this, right? So those guys work out to have numbers. I don't know what the numbers of those are, right? I know what the one over is so for them. So the, where's the where's the pole, right? It's at negative one over tau p, right? And the zero is at negative one over tau z, like that, okay? If I plug in numbers for those things, right? This guy, the pole works out to be at um, negative 628. And this guy, the zero is at negative 1.692. So we don't take that negative R2. Times 10 to the third. Multiplying the whole equation for our pole. You don't want The negative R2? No, no because, that's our K because value, the right? thing that it's the K, that's right, it's the K value. The, the R2 over R1 oh, is the K right. value, right? So, so now I got a pole, I got a zero, right? So that tells me I got breakpoints. So it, so negative six twenty eight. So one of them's over here, and then there's a, a zero over here. Right? This guy is the negative six twenty eight, and this guy is the negative one point six nine two times ten to the third. Like that, All right? Where are the breakpoints? The breakpoints are the absolute values of those. So basically, the pole is. 628 radians per second. And this guy is at 1.692. 1.692 times 10 to the third radians per second. All right, and I've got that guy in my standard form already. My K is negative R2 over R1, which I think based on my resistor values here, R2 and R1 is 10, okay? It's 10, or negative 10. And N equals three, right? Nope, I don't have any poles or zeros at the origin. Right? I have one pole, I have one zero. Neither, oh, I it was just the number of No, N is, so N. At, at the origin. At the origin, how many, so N is zero. Okay. Right, I don't have anything. So now, how do I approach this guy? Well, I go back to this picture, okay? So let's start by dimensioning the axes again, right? So where do I start when I dimension these axes? Yeah, I start at omega equal to one, right? Which is here, all right? And this is 0 0.1, and this is 10, and 100, and 1,000, 10,000, 10 to the fifth, like that, okay? So, all right. What about the what about the y-axis? How do I label that guy? 20. Twenty. Yeah, factors of twenty. So this guy's twenty, forty, negative twenty, negative forty, negative sixty, negative eighty, negative one hundred, like that. Okay. All right. So I got a pole and a zero. Let's start with the pole, right? So where was the pole 
the poll had a break point at 628. Okay, so before the poll, what's it look like? Zero, it's flat. After the poll, it does what? Drops 20 dB per decade, right? So where is the poll? 628, where is 628? Somewhere between 100 and 1,000. All right, so, so on these logarithmic charts like this, let me see if how much I can zoom in. Okay, so this, this is 100, this is 200, this is 300, this is 400, 500, 600. So it's right around here. Yeah. Well, because it, it, it's just sort of telescopes in, right, as you get closer. That's because that's this is just the way the log rises over time. Right, so it's some it's somewhere around here, okay, six twenty eight. All right, so if I go to my colors, I'm gonna be here out to six twenty eight, and then I gotta start dropping at twenty dB per decade. So two, three, four, five, six over here, here like that and and be like that okay <clears throat> now what do i do what do i do next zero. do the zero where was the zero 1.69 right so 1.69 so where is that so there's here's a thousand here's two thousand they sound like they're far away, but they're pretty close on this chart, right? So that the, I'm doing orange for that. So this guy's going to be flat. And if, I, if I'm having a, a zero, what do I do? Do I rise or fall? Rise. I rise. rise. So that guy's going to be somewhere over here. Um, something like that. All right. So what would this thing look like? It would basically do what? It would basically be, no, they won't cancel each other out. No, it would go down and then. Yep, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be flat till it gets to here. Then it's gonna start to fall and then it's gonna level off. Okay, Right. And then what do I have to do? That's the step four. Shit. Yep, I got a shift by that K value. So my K value was negative 10. So that's 20 log 10 of the magnitude of negative 10, which will be, everybody know? 20. It's going to be 20. So what do I do to this whole picture? Shift up. up. So I'm going to pick my red for the total. Is that red? I don't even know anymore. Um, it's going to be flat until I get to three, four, five, six, and then fall a little bit and then level off. And this would be a low pass? That's a good question. What is this guy? He's sort of low passing, but it looks like he's kind of passing lots of stuff, right? Yeah, that's what I was asking because it's not filtering. Not filtering a whole lot, but actually, yeah. yeah. So in the audio world, this is actually a, it's not the greatest circuit for this, right? But it is, so I actually did plot this in MATLAB, I think, already. Hopefully it's what's still up. Yeah, it is. Okay. So MATLAB just made this look like it was a lot bigger. Right, but MATLAB zoomed in, right? My axes went from like 80 to negative 120. I got a big axis. MATLAB's axis here goes from 20 dB, that's where ours started, okay, to 10 dB. All right, so MATLAB's truncated the range. But I can see that he, he begins, he, if I look carefully at the cutoff frequency and all that sort of stuff, what I'll see is everything matches my expectation. Now it's not, so this, if I have a guy like this, would I call him a low pass filter? No. Well, I don't know what I would call it. It's, it's, it's low passing in a way, but what, what, I would, what I would say about this guy, if I look at it, this is a 
a uh, common audio circuit, right? This is it's actually a, uh, probably the lowest grade version of what I would call a bass boost circuit, right? So what should a bass boost circuit do if I'm talking audio? Yeah, boost the bass, boost best the bass. instrument. And what's and what's the what is bass? Lower frequencies. Lower frequencies, right? Wait, so I got you. The lower frequencies are getting more gain than the higher frequencies, right? If I had a treble boost, I would reverse the pole and the zero, so I would, I would make the, I give more gain to the to the higher frequencies in the treble case. So I say this is a this is a sort of a low grade version of that of that circuit because I probably would want to maybe have more attenuation at the high frequencies and more gain on the low frequencies if I really wanted a good bass boost. And I could do that by changing the circuit a little bit, having some different poles and zeros, or probably more poles and zeros. Is there, is there um, I guess, a threshold like the within the magnitude that gives us that? Because this is 10, between 10 dB to 20 dB. No, I mean, in terms of, when when MATLAB drew this, MATLAB was smart. It looks at the max and min and changes okay. its axes based on that. I just use the same piece of paper that I use for all of them. So I'm not as smart as MATLAB, I guess. Okay. So it all comes down to this. I said at the very beginning, right, when we started doing this, the math looks ugly. It does, right? But it's not that bad, right? You just follow where the breakpoints get it in the standard form, do each one individually, add them up, shift the graph. Now, if, as you get more clever with this, you'll, you'll start to realize, <clears throat> well, I can begin at a certain, I can begin on the left side. And I, once I hit a pole, I'll start to fall. Once I hit a zero, I'll level off. And you probably don't even need to start drawing them individually. You can probably start to work out in your head. It's gonna go boom, 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 like that but it'll take you a little bit of time to do it. Do follow that process and you'll get used to it. All right, but follow the process. There's in the homework, three problems, I think that are straight Bodhi like this. Next week, we'll have a, a shorter homework again, but there'll be probably three more Bodhis or something like that on there for you guys to do, all right? So you wanna keep doing those problems to practice. But like I said, this is the kind of thing where MATLAB should be able to help you verify this. You get to the exam, right? MATLAB should be able to help you verify whether or not, if I say make a Bodhi plot, right? You should kind of be able to check it, okay? So um, in that regard, this is usually a, this will probably be a better exam, right? It should be in a way, right? Now the problem comes in when you gotta, when you gotta solve the circuit to get the transfer function from the circuit, then, then, it's, then you could be wrong on your circuit analysis, okay? All right, that's all I got. I mean, was that a pep talk or a... <laughs>